It looks like Matt Tiff and BJ McCaw have bought the charter from Go Fast Racing for 2021. And it looks like Tyler Ingram and Sheldon Creed will be returning to GMS for 2021. Lots of NASCAR news to get into and dirt racing news. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. A kind of a continuation from the 23XI Racing announcement yesterday, Denny Hamlin came out with some more details in an interview with Bob Pockers earlier today, and he said that details of the manufacturer, crew chief, and etc. for the 23XI Racing should be announced early next week. My speculation around this is that there are two people narrowed down for the crew chief spot, those being Mike Wheeler and Chris Gale. I think it's most likely, however, it is going to be Mike Wheeler who's going to end up being the crew chief of this team. Since he has worked with Denny Hamlin in the past, and Mike Wheeler has kind of belonged in the Joe Gizri stable. He was with Levine Family Racing 2009-2020, and remember, they partnered up with Joe Gibbs Racing at the start of 2019 season. He was a crew chief for them. And then he, to my knowledge, I think he became the president of competition for the team in 2020. Now, the manufacturer is expected to go to Toyota. We've pretty much known about this for a while. Well, it's expected to be announced that they will be partnered up manufacturer-wise with Toyota. Sponsors-wise, we don't know what the sponsors are going to be. Again, we probably know that Roots Insurance, which recently signed a personal deal with Bubble Walls, will probably be one of the sponsors for Bubble Walls in this team in 2021. I'm really excited to see what sponsors are going to go with them and all the great announcements, and I cannot wait for these announcements to come out as early as next week. Let's get into the first major story of this episode. As I said at the beginning of this episode, Matt Tiff and BJ McLeod have obtained the charter from Go Fast Racing, and they will operate the charter with Joe Falk. I'm going to read you the press release from earlier today. We're thrilled to announce the announcement that we have obtained Archie St. Hilaire's ownership interest of Circle Sport Racing Charter. BJ McLeod and Matt Tiff will operate the charter alongside Joe Falk, who brings years of experience and expertise within the industry. NASCAR's new business model that will come to fruition in 2022 with the next-gen car makes our vision possible. We are committed to being a staple in the sport for many years to come. There are more details released and we'll announce all aspects of them in the near future. Thanks for your support and looking forward to starting this new venture in 2021. As you're there, they have obtained the charter and it looks like they're going to be going full-time in 2021. Now, what's the team name going to probably be called? I would assume it's probably going to be something like BJ McLeod and Matt Tiff Racing since BJ McLeod does currently own a team in the NASCAR Cup Series in the number 78, which is a part-time organization. Now, there was speculation going around that Matt Tiff could maybe be the driver of this car. It's probably not going to be Matt Tiff. Remember, Matt Tiff, about a year ago, ended up having some health complications. He had a couple seizures, to my knowledge, in the last year or two, and he probably won't be racing because of that. But Matt Tiff will probably be a part owner, and a lot of people are really confused why some people are really confused why Matt Tiff and BJ McLeod have teamed up. I think a lot of people forget that Matt Tiff, his first ever truck star, his first ever star in a top tier ride, was driving for BJ McLeod's zero truck where he scored a ninth place finish. So these two have worked together in the past. What's really cool about this as well is they're getting a lot of younger owners in the sport. I mean, Matt Tiff, I don't think Matt Tiff is 30 years old to my knowledge. And B.J. McLeod is, is like 40 years old. So you got some younger owners coming to sport as well. You're getting these older owners that are passing ownership to the younger side, passing the torch to the younger side of owners. You look at Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is in his mid-50s, so he's a little bit older. But Denny Hamlin, only 40 years old. I don't even know if he's turned 40 yet, but he's going to be 40 next year, well, 41 next year. But he's going to be young as well. I mean, look at Justin Morris. He's in his early 40s. I mean, just a lot of young owners coming to sport. And I think a lot of these new teams that are coming into the Cup Series um, are just really excited about the next-gen car. And the fact that we're going to see a lot of really awesome and new teams in the Cup Series in the near future is really, really exciting. Now, what are my expectations for a team in their first year? They're probably going to run where they were last year. They're probably not going to run up front that much. I expect them probably to run 30th to 35th, probably even lower that on a week-to-week -week basis. They're not going to be up front because I don't think that team is going to be strong. But maybe in a couple years down the road when the next-gen car comes in, they might be able to be a little bit more competitive. But they're basically taking a spot to go faster racing. They're going to be about the 30th to 35th range most weeks. Don't expect them to run up front. But regardless of how you feel about Matt Tidd and Mijia McLeod uh, coming in sport, taking the, the charter, I think it's really awesome to see new teams kind of sport. Yes, it is unfortunate that Go Fast Racing is not returning for 2021, but, well, they're not full-time, but it's a part-time team, but 
it is really cool that you're going to see a new owners coming into sport, and it's really fun for the future. And again, I expect BJ McCall probably to be a driver, or maybe someone else will end up driving. Maybe they'll split between a couple drivers. But my expectations are is that BJ McCall is probably going to be the full time driver of his car, which is really cool. And BJ McCall can get some experience, and maybe in the future, some drivers are available. Sooner than later, we might see someone come in and drive that car that is in the free agent market. That is going to be really exciting, and I cannot wait for these official announcements to be released here very, very soon. And now on to the next story. We actually have an IndyCar story to talk about as well. Jimmy Johnson, we're going to talk about him. Chip Ganassi Racing and Jimmy Johnson have found a new primary sponsor for their IndyCar ventures next year per sources, completing the final step needed to seal this move. The brand's identity is unknown, but sources expect an announcement soon. Now, Jennifer tweeted this out earlier, just a few minutes ago, and she stated that the announcement is expected to be tomorrow. And it is a sponsor that has never been in the racing role. Now, one sponsor that has not, to my knowledge, been in the racing world in quite some time, in the IndyCar world, say at least, is Gatorade. A lot of people have brought up the sponsor Gatorade in the past because Gatorade has sponsored quite a few people in the past in NASCAR. And it'd be really cool if a sponsor like Gatorade, who has sponsored a lot of people in sports, could come to the world. But another sponsor that, to my knowledge, I don't know if this sponsor is sponsored IndyCar in the past. What about Lowe's? Lowe's used to be sponsored for Jimmy Johnson in the NASCAR Cup Series pretty much most of his career. What if they came with Jimmy Johnson? That's very po- very that could be a very big possibility as well. But Man, the fact that Jimmy Johnson is going to have a sponsor pretty much for the whole season, at least they're going to have full sponsorship for next year, is really cool. I'm wondering if Jimmy Johnson is going to run the full season. Any car next year, if it's very possible, they could just go to three cars, Chip Nasty, two full-time cars, and maybe like that Jimmy Johnson's car becomes a full-time car. Maybe Jimmy Johnson somehow will change his mind and go run Obels next year. That is a very big possibility. But yeah, really cool to see that Jimmy Johnson has a new sponsor on his way to the IndyCar Series. And now on to the next story of this episode. Two more drivers have been confirmed for the Truck Series for 2021 that will be returning. Sheldon Creed and Tyler Rankin will be returning to GMS for the 2021 season. Along with Zane Smith, who's also returning to GMS for 2021. These two, just a few minutes ago, were confirmed that they will be returning to GMS for 2021. Now, it's not confirmed Brett Moffitt's returning currently at the moment. But yeah, I'm really happy to see Sheldon Creed and Tyler Rankin returning to GMS for 2021. I think Sheldon Creed has put up together a really strong season in the Truck Series for 2020. I think, to my knowledge, he's got three wins up to this point in the Truck Series, and he's in the running to possibly make the championship four. Tyler Ingram, while he hasn't had the best year up to this point, he's had some solid numbers. He is in the round of eight. He has a very good possibility of somehow making it to the championship four, but he's probably going to have to win after crashing out at Kansas this past weekend. But both these drivers have put up together some pretty solid numbers in the truck series at GMS. And I'm just really excited to see what these two can do next year, you know, because I think they, like I said, they have put up together some really strong performances at GMS in 2020. And it's really good to see that they are going to be returning. At least GMS knows pretty much majority of their lineup for 2020. Like I said, I think they're going to put together a really good numbers. Again, next year, I think Sheldon Creed, with him returning with the same crew chief he's had for the past year, I think that, like I said, he will put up some really strong numbers next year. I think he also, once again, will be a championship contender like he has been this year. And like I said, I think he will be up front trying to contend for wins. Tyler Ingram, I think he will attempt to improve as a driver. I think he'll try to attempt to improve next year. Because like I said, while he hasn't put together the best numbers in 2020, I think in 2021, he really can improve on those numbers and improve as a driver as we go ahead and get to 2021. But yeah, I'm really excited to see what Sheldon Creed and Tyler Rickham can do next year when they return to GMS. I am really excited to see what they are going to do for 2021. And now we get into the final story of this episode. This is a dirt-related part of this episode. So, Kyle Larson Racing is unfortunately going to close at the end of 2020, which is Really unfortunate. The biggest reason in the press release today comes from the fact that COVID-19 is basically the big reason that they will not be returning. As earlier this year, Wall of Alice had a bunch of people get sick up to this point. And because there's no funding going to team and it's become a little more expensive to own a race, dirt racing team or any racing team in general, they will not be returning in 2021. They're going to be shutting down at the end of this year. Now, Kyle Larson has said 
that he would probably go to the 57 Silvia Motorsports team, but he will not return to the 57 team that he owns. It really is a big shame for Carson Macedo, who's been really good with the Kyle Larson Racing Organization in the Dirt Series, but hopefully Carson Macedo in, in the world of LS can find a way to find a good ride, because they've been around for about seven years, and the numbers that they put up, especially championship contender pretty much every year, I think that they will, that Carson Macedo will do really well whatever team he goes to, and I think that this really helps the theory of helping Kyle Larson stay focused in NASCAR. I think his biggest, biggest focus is going to be trying to focus on his cup endeavors because he is expected to be announced in the near future. He will be driving for Hendrick Motorsports' number five car. And Rick Hendrick has not been the biggest keen player in wanting Kyle Larson to go to dirt, which is originally one of the reasons why people did not think he was going to Hendrick Motorsports in the first place. But Kyle Larson has said recently as well that his goal is to just be in NASCAR. He does want to race dirt. But his biggest goal is that he wants to continue to race in NASCAR, come back to NASCAR and focus on that. Because Kyle Larson's pretty much won everything under the sun. He's won late model races, he's won sprint car races, and he's won a lot of different types of races in the past in the Dirt Series. He's torn up this year, and he's done incredible. Now, like I said, it really sucks you're seeing teams in the world of outlaws shutting down. But again, I think COVID-19, like I said in yesterday's video with Go Fast Racing, it's just affecting everything in general. I mean, in F1, you're seeing teams have issues that were even having issues getting on the grid. IndyCars had this kind of issue as well. And I mean, NASCAR's had a big issue now. The World of Outlaws is having their own problems trying to keep funding. And I think that this will be something we'll have to keep an eye on is how many teams are going to officially get affected by COVID-19. Are there going to be a lot of teams affected by it? Or is that something that isn't really going to be affected? We're going to have to find out here really soon. But yeah, that is going to be it for today's second video on the channel. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Notification so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Link in the description below for that. And comment your thoughts on today's video. How well do you think Sheldon Creed and Tyler Eric and Murray do next year? Do you think they're just still going to be championship contenders like they were last year? Or do you think they're going to have a slump at GMS next year? Let me know in the comments below. And how well do you think Matt Tiff and BJ McCloud are going to do as owners in 2021? Do you think you're going to do well or not? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like this video so YouTube can recommend more of these really good videos out to you guys. If you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.